Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to take a look at the solution, the winning solution to a Kaggle competition that I did with my students. We'll look at a solution by Di Huang, who is a graduate student at Washington University who took my course. I'll give you a link to his LinkedIn page and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at his solution. So this competition in Kaggle, I had the students look at Minecraft images. I had a GAN generate a whole bunch of Minecraft images that I trained it just by running around like crazy and uh, capturing a bunch of video and taking those individual frames. And then we look at the difference. Can you tell the difference between a real Minecraft image and a fake one? Not all of them are so easy. I have images from at night. Can you tell the difference? The important thing is, can you create a neural network that tells the difference? Now, this Kaggle competition, we only had eight students this semester, so I didn't open it up to the internet. There was one person from the internet that uh, did compete as well. So let's go ahead and have a look at the solution. Hi, everyone. My name is Di Huang, and now I'm a master student in the program Information System Management. And today I will give a presentation on my solution on this Kaggle project. So first, let's give you an overview of this project. Uh, the task of this project is a binary classification, and the data is all the image data, specifically is the Minecraft picture. And the real Minecraft images are collected from the game, while the fake Minecraft images are generated by the game. Uh, the original image has height and weight with 1024, and it has RGB3 channel. Uh, the evaluation matrix for this project is log loss. And well, my solution can be divided into three phases. So let's start starting my phase. So in the phase one, uh, I build the CN model from scratch, uh, we, along with the image augmentation file. Uh, you can see the... Uh, structure of the model here. Actually, the model, the structure is the same way the professor does not yet because I think it is very, it is very, it is very good. What I make a difference is that uh, in the input layer, I resize the image to 128 and 128 height and width. So because I want to use, I want to train this neural network fast and try different image augmentation. And also in the train, during training, I set the batch size to 100. During the uh, image augmentation trial, I have tried uh, these common uh, augmentation strategies such as uh, horizontal, horizontal flip, vertical flip, uh, rotation, brighten, uh, zoom in and only the from my experiment, uh, only the horizontal flip will put the model. And you know, uh, data augmentation has some side benefits. It is kind of it can function kind of like a uh, fight against uh, overfitting because you can send like send the you can feed the neural network with the image from different perspective. And so I use the uh, horizontal flip as uh, image. That's the only image augmentation in my phase two. So here is my phase two. In phase two, I use uh, transfer learning. Uh, the first pre-trained model I use is ResNet 50. For the input for the input shape of this pre-trained model, which is 256. Uh, actually, I have tried different uh, different sizes, different resize strategy. And uh, 256 is, uh, is the best choice for me. Connect, connected with the uh, output layer of the base model, I uh, use a global max pooling layer. Uh, you, I have also tried to use a global average pooling layer, but there's nothing different. And the last four layers are all dense layers with decreasing uh, unit number. Uh, the next pre-trained model I use is exception. Actually, the structure is all is almost the same with the pre previous model, except the base model part I switched to exception. And for the third model, third pre-trained model, which is efficient at B0, the structure is a kind of different because the output shape of this pre-trained model is a little bit lower than, smaller than the previous two models. So I only use three dense layers in the uh, in the last as our as, as my last layer. Uh, I have also tried to uh, initialize the weight randomly 
which I didn't uh, initialize. Uh, but the random initialization for the model will give me very bad result. And I also have tried to freeze some part of pre-trained model. But yeah, unfreeze or make all the layers of the pre-trained model to be trainable can give me better result. Uh, so for the hyperparameter I use here is that uh, the optimizer is the atom and the initial learning rate is 10 to the negative five. The batch size is 32 because with the GPU memory uh, that Kaggle provide, you cannot use larger <laughs> batch size, otherwise you will cause out of memory error. And for the steps per epoch, I choose to, I set it to 200 and the max epoch is 50. For the learning rate scheduler, I use the reduce learning rate on plateau. I have also tried the combination of the full update, which is uh, change the steps per epoch to the length of the training data divided by the batch size. And with this, with this uh, full update strategy, the learning rate scheduler, I use uh, warm up learning rate with the exponential learning rate decay. Uh, both these two uh, update uh, strategy uh, works very well, but for the strategy I use here, it is a little bit faster to train, but it is just a little bit. Uh, for the monitor, I use a model checkpoint, uh, which I store all the models during training, because sometimes you have a very, you have a lower score in the epoch, for example, Epoch 48, but it is just you overfit the validation data. So sometimes you can pick uh, the model which have a little bit higher loss in the previous 20 or 10 epoch. That will give you a better result on the leaderboard. Uh, for the early stopping, I set the patience to be 10. So in phase three, I use the example and the value clipping. Uh, you can see from this form that all the values here are the validation log loss, which is approximately 20% of the training data. And for the clipping strategy, I use the low bound to be 0 0.3 and the high bound to be 0 0.7, 0 0.97. Uh, this clapping strategy will help you, uh, will smooth the punishment on log loss for those false positive and uh, false negative prediction with high confidence. Uh, for the blending strategy, I use uh, weight 0 0.3 on the ResNet 50 based model and 0 0.4 reception based model and 0 0.3 uh, on the efficient net based model. Yeah, because the exception model give it has the best single model performance on the leaderboard. But what I found very interesting is that if I just take the simple single takes average of the prediction result from these two base from these two models, it will give me better result. <laughs> Last, I want to share uh, some thoughts of myself and maybe and some future work I think I need to do. Uh, in this project, I didn't utilize TPU yeah, because of uh, time limit. I need to yeah so. With, C, with TPU, you may uh, train it, train the model very fast because you can have a larger batch, batch size during training. And sometimes larger batch size may give you a better model performance. And also you can see I have used three pre-trained models uh, in the base two, but actually I didn't go very deep to the structure of this model and the idea behind this model. So I just use them as a black box some kind. So I think I may need to like uh, search the internet and read some blogs that explain these models. Yeah, because sometimes it is not very easy to just read the paper and understand everything. <laughs> and from my uh, past experiences in the natural language processing tasks and like competitions, you know, birds and the models in the transformer family beat everything. But however, I think in the computer vision area, uh, different kind, there are different kinds of pre-trained model for you to explore. For example, I have seen many people use the ResNet 101, some use Inception, some use EfficientNet B3. They have also achieved very good performance on the same task. So yeah, I think it is very interesting to like explore the uh, area of computer vision. And I want to thank for the professor for this master's lecture. And I will definitely recommend your course and your YouTube channel to all my friends who want to learn deep learning. And also congratulations to all the classmates who get 
high tire in this competition. So that's it. Okay, thank you, D. Very good presentation. How long did it? How long did does it take you to train your model just to 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 run it completely through and and build the submission file? Um, for the single model in the phase two, about uh, thirty to forty minutes. Okay. Uh, it will stop. Okay. And did you do your processing all inside of Kaggle, or did you use Colab or personal machines or anything like that? Yeah, I just use Kaggle because yeah, my lap laptop don't have very large G uh, GPU memory. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's amazing the GPUs that they that they have available on this. I think this is I think it's a V100 that they're using, if I remember right. Um, but but um, mm -hmm. with about 16 gig of RAM, they they update that that each uh, each time as well. Now your three your three models you did a blend, and I saw you you basically had the I think a three a three and a four uh, for the yeah. So did you just hand tune the the 30, 40, and thirty percent? Yeah, I just hand tune because because I have like try to use some like stack stack example or some uh -huh. use the uh, uh, linear use the linear regression as a meta learner but yeah i think sometimes these simple hand tuning uh parameters can make better performance yeah from my own experience yeah believe me on of of the two Kaggle competitions that I that I did halfway decent on, both were hand tuned like this. I tried, I tried much more uh, elaborate systems. Did you use the the leaderboard to evaluate the the uh, the each iteration of your tuning, or did you have some sort of local cross validation? Uh, yeah, for I didn't use the cross validation in this competition. Okay. Yeah, I just use the information I get from the leaderboard. Yep, no, that's a that's a good way to do it. Yeah, because your neural network for if you use like four five fold cross validation, it takes a very very long time. Yes, yeah, and and you're and you're losing some of your training data as well. Yeah. And you you definitely did not overfit. So I mean, you you did not seem to 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 lose much when that private leaderboard was brought in. So so very good. Now you, I've I've noticed in Kaggle you're ranked as a as an expert. What what other area have you participated in in Kaggle? Was it notebooks or data sets or competitions? Yeah, it's the notebook. Okay, very good. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in this course, all of the material is available on YouTube. I've also got links to the Kaggle competition and Dee's notebook has complete source code available to take a look at his solution. Thank you for watching. And if you want to see more, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.